Hi guys and welcome to another Thoughtscapes. I just want to thank you first and foremost for the subscribers, all the support I've got since I've started this channel. It's been kind of overwhelming that I've got loads of followers on Instagram and I've got people who have subscribed because they want to see my content. So it just fills my heart with so much gladness and appreciation. So thank you first and foremost for that. Secondly, I am here to talk about hoarding. It just follows on from the video that I did about minimalism. I did not anticipate the reception that that video got and it was a suggestion by one of my followers and it is actually one of my most popular videos. Here are my five top tips for easily decluttering your house. I come from a Filipino family and if any of you guys out there are Filipino, you will know what your parents are like. If your parents are of the age of like, let's say 40, late 40s and above, and they've moved to another country, so they're not in Philippines. Actually, even if they were in Philippines, but most likely they're not in the Philippines, then they are some serious hoarders. This is my kitchen. To give you an example, in my parents' kitchen, they have about 30 mugs. And we're a family of four. I just don't get why we have so many mugs, we have so many extra plates, we have so much extra cutlery. And what's worse, oh, my bugbear is Tupperware. We have like a whole cupboard full of Tupperware. There's only one Tupperware in the fridge at any one point in time. Just, I just never can comprehend it. Number one, when you go about the task of trying to declutter your space, do it section by section. Do not set yourself a target of being able to declutter your entire house in a day. It's just not going to happen. One, it's very unrealistic, and two, you're gonna overwhelm yourself. I'm guilty of this myself. I've done it once where I thought I'm gonna declutter my whole room. And my room isn't even that big, but it took a course of days because going through the process of decluttering can be a very emotional process. <laughs> and you go through things that you might have not seen in years, that you have sentimental value attached to, it's very nostalgic, and sometimes you just want to look at things like albums and just absorb it, and that takes time. So make sure you designate an adequate amount of time based on the size of the section that you're trying to declutter, how much sentimentality is attached, and please make sure that you don't wallow in the nostalgia, the emotional connection to the items that you're trying to declutter because it will defeat the purpose of what you're trying to do. In a way, you don't want it to be too academic because I can appreciate if there's something there that's sentimental, you want some time to absorb it. But what I'm trying to say here is don't let that consume you to the point where you forget about decluttering and you're just focused on reliving memories. So the way that I've tackled this in the past is that I have allocated half a day a day to things that I know I have a sentimental connection with. So the beginning of the year I went through the shed, I was going through all my books from primary school, secondary school and university and I know for some of those things I will have an emotional connection to. But for things that you don't really have that sentimentality towards, allocate a couple of hours to do the job. Number two, now this could be a really really hard one. The way it's worked for me is that when you're sorting out your items only have two piles. One pile for the keep and one pile for the get rid ofs. Try to not have a maybe pile because I know just from personal experience everything goes into the maybe pile and your keeps and your maybe piles are so huge and you'll end up only getting rid of a select amount of things and that completely defeats the purpose of what you're trying to achieve. You can't keep it. Why? You gotta throw them back. Why? I you wanna keep it. And what could work for you is using a Likert scale to help you make your decision. So give each item a rating from one to five. One being never used, second being rarely used, third being, yep, somewhat used, fourth being used often, and five being always used. And your cutoff point is for anything that you've given a two and below, you get rid of three and above, then you keep. And once you've made your decision, make sure that you put everything away. It's organized, it's out of the way so that you don't have the tendency of going back through your pile of get rid ofs and starting to just take away from that pile and putting it into the keep pile again. Using a like it scale will make the task a little bit easier for you because it kind of removes the emotion about it and ultimately it helps you make that decision when you're umming and eyeing, torn between whether to keep something or to get rid of it. 
Number three, paperwork. What I've been doing for the past couple of years and it's worked super well for me because before I used to have to file everything, important bills, documents, certificates, I filed them away and they just lived under my bed. The space that it took up, it was heavy. Papers that I rarely went through but I kept because they were important documents, the kind of just in case files. Well, what I've done instead is that I have been scanning all of those documents and electronically filing them instead of having physical tangible copies nowadays a scan will do if it's a good quality scan and you've made sure that you scan the back and the front when it comes to using that document if you ever needed to use it it's very rare that people will doubt the authenticity of that document obviously there are still some documents in your life that you do need to keep and not just scan like birth certificates so please don't shred that I'm an alien. As soon as you've scanned it, store it electronically on a laptop, on your cloud, on an external, and then shred that document because the documents that you tend to keep are gonna be personal documents and you don't want people to steal those or copy those. Get rid of them and shred them in a secure way. And on top of that, there's usually an option now to go paperless or for paperless communication. So make sure that for those accounts, you've got the paperless option checked so that you don't receive all this unwanted paper and then you get it via email. Number four, have you ever heard the saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure? It's a dingle hopper. Well, this rings true for this particular decluttering exercise. Why don't you use this decluttering opportunity to make some hard earned cash? All you have to do is identify the right market who will buy those things. So do some quick research on your target market on the internet. Who's buying that kind of item? Where are they buying it from and at what? price and some good places to start that I'm sure you guys have probably heard of are eBay, Gumtree. Gumtree is a UK thing. Um, I think in the US it's Craigslist. Spock is another app. Spock is a good app. It's the equivalent of a online car boot. And then there's the traditional car boots to physically sell stuff to other people. And my last tip, and this is a very important one, so please pay attention. This whole decluttering process will be a big waste of time if you end up hoarding things again. So please think carefully about acquiring new items. Think about things such as how often will you use it? Where will you store it? Are there any other alternatives to that that you can buy? And also, if you need any additional help when making that decision of should I get something, should I not, watch my video about should I buy it. I'm going to link it here somewhere and hopefully that will help you make the right decision and it won't end up in you hoarding something unnecessarily. So guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you've got any other decluttering tips. It really helps to share your tips with others. I want to know some decluttering tips because it's coming to the end of the year and usually around this time it starts getting cold in London. So I start switching out my summer clothes to my winter clothes and during that process I also start trying to declutter a bit of my wardrobe. So please leave some helpful tips down below. Also, by the way, subscribe to my channel if you do like this content and when you do subscribe, if you want to see or want to know whether my content has been uploaded please press the bell button or icon I'll put it somewhere here so you know what it looks like it just notifies you every time I post a video and I will see you in my next video do you like my shirt that's life <laughs> really is decutlering oh, man there's something on my camera stop hoarding